What's going on, everybody? Josh Engelman for AwesomeMode.com, and I am back with my NBA DFS contenders on FanDuel for Tuesday, May 3rd. And be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman. Let me know in the comments section who your favorite plays are. And then go sign up at No House Advantage using the promo code AwesomeO so that you can get yourself $25 on that first deposit. Now we're rounding out the bottom of my top 10 with Robert Williams, Jalen Brown, Drew Holiday, Clay Thompson, and Marcus Smart on the outside looking in. Who will be my favorites? My top five plays for today? Time to find out. First up at number five, we've got Desmond Bain. He's shooting guard, small forward, eligible 6,400, projected for 33. The goal is 36, and he is in the optimal lineup 44% of the time. Didn't go well for Bain in game number one. I expect a rebound here. 36 minutes, 0.93 fantasy points per minute. He's a neutral usage guy. He's basically just like a neutral everything guy and just getting the minutes. 21% usage, 19 points, five boards, two and a half assists, two stocks. Uh, you know, same matchup against Golden State. Obviously, you would expect Draymond to be out there a little bit more. So that's probably not a good thing for Bain. But with this price, with the shooting guard small forward eligibility, with the fact that he's going to play 36 minutes in a competitive game, this one seems pretty easy. Next up at number four, we're going Al Horford. He's power forward center eligible, 5,600, projected for 31. The goal is 32, and he is in the optimal lineup 46% of the time. I gave Horford 32 minutes. He played big minutes in game one. I don't think that that's going to be all that surprising. They're going to need him out there. The round a fantasy point per minute, 15% usage. He's just not involved in the scoring as much as he used to be, but he does a lot else. 11 points, eight boards, three assists, two stocks. It's still a pace up spot against Milwaukee and it's still a Milwaukee team that's without Chris Middleton, but ah, I don't know. It just didn't look great in game one, but I don't think that that matters. We still see Boston as four and a half point favorites at home. They are look on paper. They may be the better team. I don't know how true that is anymore after game number one, but I'm going to go with what's on paper and this one should be competitive throughout. And if that's the case, 32 minutes might be the floor for Al Horford. At number three, we go back to Memphis for Brandon Clark. Power forward, center eligible, 6,100. Projected for 35. The goal is 35. He's in the optimal lineup 50% of the time. I gave him 30 minutes. I think he played 32 in the first one. This could go a couple different directions. 1.18 fantasy points per minute for Clark. That's what gets him to the coin flip of being in the optimal. 17% usage. He should be fantastic on the boards. 14 points, 9 rebounds, 2 assists, and 2.5 and stocks. I just like this matchup. For Brandon Clark, uh, I think the more likely scenario is that he gets more minutes, not less. They could potentially phase out Tillman or try to match up Tillman's minutes if they put Looney out there and that end of the first quarter, beginning of the second quarter type run. But I'm not really seeing a, a lot of situations where Brandon Clark comes off the floor. It's possible when Jaron Jackson is not in foul trouble that Brandon Clark does not close. They go to more guards because Golden State is going to more guards. That's the only thing that I think can really stop Brandon Clark's minutes. At number two, we're paying up for Giannis Antetokounmpo. Small forward, power forward eligible, 11,200. Projected for 62. The goal is 61 and a half, and he is in the optimal lineup 59% of the time. 38 minutes here for Giannis. He filled up the stat sheet in the first one, but the scoring wasn't really there. That's going to come at some point in time. 35% usage, 31 points, 13 rebounds, seven and a half assists, and two and a half stocks. I don't think anybody's going to be surprised here. If you're paying up today, uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo is your answer. Now, before we get to that number one contender, one last reminder, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Follow me on Twitter at Josh Engelman. Let me know in the comment section who your favorite plays are, and then go sign up at No House Advantage using the promo code AWESOMO. Your number one contender, at least for me, is Dylan Brooks. Shooting guard, small forward. Best position eligibility you can get. Even on FanDuel, that's where I want to be. I want to cross guard and forward. He's 5K, projected for 31 and a half. The goal is just 29. That's the key piece. That's the thing that everybody needs to remember. Cover up Dylan Brooks' name. If you see 5K on FanDuel today, if you get to 30 fantasy points, you're feeling really good. He's in the optimal lineup 69% of the time. I gave Dylan Brooks 34 minutes. Even if you want to give him 30, he's a really good play because of that price. He's a 0.9 fantasy point per minute guy. He shoots as much as he possibly can. 27% usage, 20 real points, four boards, three assists, a stock and a half. This is a scoring thing. At 5K, is anybody surprised if Dylan Brooks scores more than 20 real points in a basketball game? Clearly the answer is no, given someone with his usage. 
if he gets to, let's just say 25 real points, that's a really good scoring game. He barely needs to do anything else on the floor to justify the 5K. The price tag is the key piece here. Don't pay attention to Dylan Brooks himself. Realize what you're getting. 0.9 fantasy points per minute at 5K across shooting guard and small forward. Those things make you have make you be the number one contender. I wish I would have closed that better. It felt like a really good Dylan Brooks rant. We're going to leave it in. That's what we do. Alrighty, folks, that will do it. Those are my NBA DFS contenders on FanDuel for Tuesday, May 3rd. Now, there's a DraftKings version of this video around here somewhere, so check it out. Good luck tonight, everybody. Win some money. We are back again tomorrow morning for another edition of The Contenders.